Yeah, I'll be right about there. 10 seconds. And we'll see two airplanes taking off in formation. That will never, ever, ever get old. Test control your car roll, Dave. So smooth with the gear up. Man's age old dream of flight becomes a reality. One, zero, all engines running. Da 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 da. If they happen along. Test control of you are go for break release. Did you, did you have imagined as a kid you would have been building a supersonic airplane company? Uh, there is no way as a kid I ever would have dream that I, I would get to go work on something like this. My, my parents told me that I first fell in love with airplanes when I was six months old, because they'd taken me to the local airport to watch Cessnas take off and land. And I, I remember in elementary school, kind of drawing napkin sketches of airplanes I wanted to build. Uh, but it never occurred to me to have a career in aerospace. As I was growing up in the, the 80s and 90s, that's not where innovation was happening. Innovation was in computers and internet, and I fell in love with that stuff. I started my first company in my parents' basement in high school, and uh, went to school for computer science, had my first job uh, at Amazon as a software engineer. Along the way, I was part of a couple different startups. The first one that I founded, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, uh, we made a barcode scanning game. A, a thing I learned from that experience is that there's no such thing as an easy startup. And I would get up in the morning working on that and think like, why am I doing this? Uh, the, the, the pain just wasn't worth it. And so fast forward to 2014, I thought, okay, I, I do not want to die wondering what would happen if I'd looked at supersonic. And I spent about a year getting educated in aerospace, took an airplane design course, bought every textbook I could get my hands on, read it, uh, took a remedial calculus class or remedial physics class because I hadn't had any calculus or physics since high school. There was a key moment in the middle of 2014 when I had a spreadsheet model of the airplane a spreadsheet model of the market, and I, I took it to a professor at Stanford. And I said, dude, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I, like I've been at this for like a couple months, uh, and my, my models might be garbage in, garbage out. Can you help me check my assumptions, check my math, tell me if this it makes any sense to you? And he looks at it, and he clicks around, and he says, Blake, like, if you're gonna really go do this, you should, you should push your team harder. All these assumptions you've got are conservative. And I remember uh, leaving his office uh, almost in this, like, stupor because I, I couldn't quite believe it. If that was true, either I had no courage or I was going to go put a team together and make a run at making this really happen. We will we'll turn 10 on paper in two weeks. And uh, so for, for me, this has been like building an iceberg from the bottom up and it goes very slowly in the beginning. Uh, most of the progress is not visible. And now we're at the part of the program where uh, the pace has picked up and things are, things are moving quickly in all kinds of different ways. The last new airplane company founded by an entrepreneur, a commercial airplane company, was Douglas Aircraft, founded 1921. So uh, Boom is the first new commercial airplane company in more than a century. And of course, we're doing something much harder in building a supersonic passenger airliner than Douglas did on their first aircraft. So rather than going straight into production on a 400,000 pound safety critical supersonic airliner, we were gonna go build a subscale prototype so we can learn our lessons uh, that would make Overture, the airliner, uh, much more likely to be a success. And so that is the airplane behind me. This is what we call XP-1. was designed by the team here at Boom. The outer mold line of this aircraft is unique uh, to, uh, to Boom and to the program. The uh, aircraft is like many other prototypes you'd see on other programs where the shape of the aircraft is unique, the way we put all the systems together is unique, but some of the components on the aircraft are actually things that come from other aircraft. I've always enjoyed doing things that expand our aviation knowledge. Um, I started out uh, at the Air Force Academy uh, many years ago 
uh, wanting to be a pilot. I flew combat rescue for a number of years um, and then got into test pilot school. Basically spent my last 25 years of my career in flight test and learning how to test aircraft and take them to their limits, um, which is why I'm here at Boom, uh, helping to get XB-1, uh, get XB-1 supersonic. This is the stair step that, uh, that gets us there, is showing that we can design, build, and fly a supersonic airplane like this. So what we did was basically uh, sketch out what we thought Overture would be like, put that sketch aside, shrink it down to one-third scale, and then do design, build, fly, learn. And what we are looking at here is really the uh, Tesla Roadster of supersonic jets. As much as we could borrow off of other airplanes and not have to recreate, we borrowed off of other airplanes. What's new here is that this is the very first time this has been done outside of a government or military. And we did it five to 10 times more capitally efficient than it's ever been done before. My name is Scott Powell. I'm the Senior Vice President here at Boom Supersonic, overseeing the engineering for both the Overture airplane and the Symphony engine system. Uh, my background comes from about 38 and a half years at the Boeing company. I started back in 85 on the Stealth Bomber uh, propulsion there and migrated that career through the YF-22 over to the Joint Strike Fighter, the 787 program, and ended up my career there re-engineering the oldest bomber known to men and women, the B-52 bomber. Yeah, I've uh, even in my younger years I was motocross uh, and then car racing so it speeds always been a part of the life so overture uh, 64 passenger airplane Mach 1.7 cruise speed uh, compared to the 2.0 that the Concorde had but 1.7 really appears to be that optimum so that's about two times what we're flying today uh, overland we're still subsonic but we're about 20 percent faster so we're flying at 0.94 Mach overland can you talk about some of the early trades and decisions you made on the initial design, like in comparison to the Concorde? You know, we did look at some engine trades for individual engines versus dual potted engines like you would see on a Concorde. But for the speeds that we're running and with a turbofan jet engine as opposed to a turbojet jet engine, it, it packages more efficiently uh, from a propulsion aerodynamic interaction to have four individual engines as opposed to two potted for four engines. One of the things is that nose, that droop nose, very heavy, very mechanical droop nose. Well, today's technology, you have advanced or augmented reality systems, so you can provide that capability without having to carry all that extra weight. The Overture airplane is going to have a, a very different kind of engine, a different class of engine, a new kind of engine. The engines that uh, are on this airplane are engines that were um, easy to find uh, on the market and that provided the amount of thrust we needed for what this airplane was going to do. So a very, very different engine from what will what will go on on Overture. Yeah, you know, my favorite part, I always call it the sexy part of the airplane. And uh, it's a turbofan engine, so not dissimilar to what you see out there, but what you're used to seeing is what we call an ultra high bypass ratio engine. An F 119, for example, is like 0.9 bypass ratio, so very, very low. We're in the low threes, so we're still a turbofan, but we have to make it a little bit smaller so we can be aerodynamically efficient but big enough that we can still meet the FAA acoustic signatures. So we don't want to be any louder than any plane out there today. So what people get confused about is they think about a, a jet engine as being a supersonic jet engine. A jet engine is just a jet engine, whether it's a subsonic application or a supersonic application. All the work is done by the inlet up front. We're flying at Mach 1.7, but we're going to slow that air up such that when it hits the fan face, it's between 0.5 and 0.6 Mach numbers. So the engine itself doesn't know if it's going subsonic or supersonic. I'd say, you know, the fun challenges that we're working on is when you get to a certain size or diameter of the fan, you have to have a hollow core fan blade. So that's a manufacturing technology that we're working on as we speak with a, a very solid road path to get there. We are doing things here much more quickly and I'll say efficiently than I could have ever done at my previous company. My previous company was an awesome company. Uh, but when you get into a company that's 100 years old, it's burdened by processes, etc. We have the best of the best here. We come from different engine companies, different airplane companies. The working environment in a startup, we're much faster, we're much more agile, we're still all about safety, but we can do things much more quickly than the tier one companies can. 
Uh, we are at the Mojave Air and Space Port, and this is just uh, a really special place. It's really the flight test capital of the world. Uh, this is where a lot of firsts have happened. The airspace is the same airspace that Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in. Uh, today, we're going to make XB-1 flight free, and in the not too distant future, we're going to make our own history uh, by flying the world's first independently developed supersonic jet, Supersonic. Uh, chase our plane just took off. It will come back around and do what's called an airborne pickup. And then the chase airplane and XB-1 take off in uh, formation. So roughly 12 flights from flight one to first supersonic flight. And the way flight test works uh, to do it safely is to test one thing at a time. So we're on to flight three today. We're gonna push to higher altitudes. We're gonna use the landing gear, extend retraction in the air at higher speeds than we have before. Uh, we're gonna activate the cabin pressurization system. We're gonna expand the envelope for nose angle and side slip angle. Um, and then we're gonna come back around and uh, that's 30 seconds now, uh, 30 seconds to break release, so. Test control if you are go for break release. There they are. That will never, ever, ever get old. Uh, should be about 30 minutes in the air, which will be by a factor of three, this will be our longest flight yet. Test control, you are go for gear retraction. So smooth with the gear up. I think there's nothing more deeply human than, than flying. Like, do something that we were absolutely not born to do. Uh, we had to invent how to fly. We had to discover the physics. We had to discover the engineering. We had to go invent better, do things that we were absolutely not born to do. There she is. There she is. Geppetto was at the controls this morning. This is his second flight. And uh, he's going to be the pilot that takes it all the rest of the way through Mach 1. <laughs> How was that? No big deal. Spoken like a test pilot. Hey, I, you're smiling. Yeah. Hey, congrats. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, how'd she fly? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Anything surprising? Uh, how well she flew, I think. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> fucking fantastic. Yeah, we saw maybe a little bit of wing rock gear up. Uh huh. Uh, it was pretty subtle. Yeah. Um, gear down. Uh, yeah, today was flight three of XB1. Um, increasing the cadence of our flight test uh, tempo here. So uh, it was pretty exciting that today was kind of no big deal. Maybe make a couple, couple changes, a couple little tweaks, and then hopefully be flying it again pretty soon. I started out as a naval aviator, went to the Naval Academy, studied aerospace engineering, and I uh, selected to be a pilot. Flew F-18s in the Navy, selected to go to test pilot school. Spent some time as an adversary in, in New Orleans, went to the Top Gun adversary course. Started out at BOOM as a landing signal officer before we started flying and then selected as a, as a test pilot here. I'm pretty passionate about the idea of life happens in person and we wanna make the world more accessible to more people. Additionally, cutting edge programs like this don't come along very often. From a test pilot perspective, this is an absolute dream. Having the opportunity to fly something like this, a one of a kind airplane, something that's never been done before. What was going through your mind this morning as you're kind of taxiing and taking off for flight three? You spend so much time preparing for it and thinking about it, going into it. We rehearsed it in the sim numerous times. It's kind of funny, while I'm flying it, I, I, I really don't even like think about what's, what's happening. I just think about what I'm, what I'm doing. I think people think that uh, a test pilot must be an, an adrenaline junkie. I'm really not. Uh, my favorite test flights are usually the most boring test flights. Uh, that means that the team has worked well to understand the risks, understand what the airplane's going to do, and that our predictions matched our model, which ultimately means better safety. Uh, we saw a limit cycle oscillation on flight two. I see. Uh, pretty subtle. It's Got gone. it. It's gone, yeah. okay. Yeah, we made a guess and it looks, well, initial indications indicate that it, that it worked. Today was one of those flights. It went exactly like we planned. The, the team was really firing on all cylinders and everything felt good today. 
That is awesome. That is good to hear. Well, hey, well fucking done, yeah. man. Proud of you. No big deal now. No big just deal. Doing, just doing flight tests. No now. big deal. We're just doing flight tests. We're on our way to going supersonic in the airplane. The three flights we've done um, have gotten the aircraft up to about 15,000 feet. And uh, today we hit about 230 knots. We are uh, working our way towards eventually getting transonic and then getting supersonic. These first three flights were all focused on checking out the basic functions of the aircraft. Uh, here's the bird. Uh, this is the, uh, the best seat in the entire office. It looks like a fighter jet. And, and so we get asked a lot, uh, is there an ejection seat on XB-1? There is no ejection seat on the airplane. And this was uh, a decision that, that I had to make years ago. It was hugely controversial. You know, some, some people thought we were being recklessly irresponsible to not put an ejection seat on the airplane. It made the airplane much more difficult to develop because we didn't have to get out of jail free. If there's a question of where is there a hazard or an unlikely situation in the flight envelope, we couldn't simply say, oh, okay, well, if that happens, the pilot will punch out. Nope, gotta bring home the airplane and the pilot safely. It really drove uh, the entire design of the aircraft in terms of the amount of redundancy we had to have, the safety bar that we held the design of the systems to, um, and then how we designed some of the systems. So like, for example, having multiple hydraulic systems um, or not having a, a single point of failure in the system, uh, having an appropriate way to, to mitigate that. The big thing that really comes out of XB-1 is, you know, we built a team that designed an aircraft from the ground up. We, you know, have had lots of learnings on this airplane, lots of things that, um, that we've had to work through, you know, challenges. Developing a team that knows how to tackle a challenge, how to solve it, uh, build an airplane, fly an airplane, and solve problems that come up when, you've, uh, when you, you find something you weren't expecting. It's really great being able to spend, you know, literally years and years of your life uh, working on an airplane, uh, you know, fixing the problems that you find. Now that we're getting this airplane into what I would call a normal operational rhythm where it's going to fly every week, two weeks, three weeks, um, it's really nice because it gets me back to what I did for most of my career, which was a uh, flight test where you're, you're flying aircraft pretty regularly, you're learning new things every time you fly it, you're looking at the data, maybe making small tweaks to it, and then going out and flying it again. And we are essentially getting into that phase of the flight program right now, where we'll spend the next probably 10 sorties uh, incrementally expanding the envelope, learning things, but uh, essentially getting the aircraft to where it's gonna go supersonic and, and make history. Our goal is to be supersonic before the end of the year. Every time we get a, a good flight with a clean bill of health, what that means is we can now accelerate to the next flight. Our current expectations are going to take about a dozen flights. So prior to the second flight, this is its second landing. Obviously, we got a little camber, so we got a little more wear here. But I'm yeah, just doing pretty good. I'll take that's a that's great. Look at it when I yeah. Have a well, that's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Uh, we want to make sure that that all risk uh, has been uh, checked and crossed off. Uh, but uh, as much as possible before that first supersonic flight. Dude, well done. Yes. Well done. Thank you for letting this happen, man. This is, oh. this is <laughs> for Very letting awesome. this happen? Or getting it done. <laughs> uh, That's a little uh, bit like, of like, isn't it? I, I, some, I don't know. Like, uh, I just feel incredibly privileged to be able to, to do this. Like, yeah. I pinch myself, like, we get to work at a supersonic jet startup. Like, how the hell did that happen? That we built from scratch. Right? right? Yeah, so no, it is. Man, you definitely get a sense of pride once you get the same land every single yeah. yeah, I mean, just the, the amount of blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, and now now we're in danger of making some history. Very close. Cool. Isn't that great? They still look just like they did. look amazing. They look just like they Yeah, like, I have a, there's a very good chance that these are going to go off by four. Yeah. yeah.